Let's cook and taste Japan with Savvy Sensei right out of your own home. My name is Naoki Kato. Nice to meet you. Today, I am going to show you how to break down a fish and slice it for sashimi and also show you how to do plating. First, let me explain about the utensils. A cutting board. A big one is better for working on the fish. Now, I will talk about the knives I will use. This is an usuba knife. I mainly use it for peeling vegetables and making katsura muki. Next, this is a yanagiba knife, which is designed for slicing sashimi. And this is a gyuto knife. It's a general use knife. You can find it useful for chopping vegetables or you can break down fish with it. This is a diba knife, which has a thick blade so it's suitable for breaking down the fish. Now here is a petty knife. They come in handy for the preparation of smaller vegetables. These are moribashi, wooden handled stainless steel chopsticks. It is useful to have a set of these that have a pointed top for picking up smaller things. These are called fish tweezers. They are going to be able to grab the bones and easily pull them out. This is a fish scaler. It is used to remove the scales from a fish. This is an ice pick. Today we are going to use this for preparing mussels. And this is a small scrubber and a toothbrush. These we are going to use for taking the bloodline off from the fish and cleaning the cavity. This is a stainless grater and a shark skin grater. This is for grating fresh wasabi. And that's all for the tools. How to grate wasabi. Okay, here I have fresh hon wasabi. Now I am going to explain how to grate and preserve hon wasabi. So, this is the tip of the stem, and this down here is the root end. Where to start grating? We usually start grating from the stem tip. This is the stem. You can tear the stem off by hand. They also have a nice hot flavor. Actually, you can eat them as well, so I recommend you keep it. Chop it up and season it with salt.
Now, I am going to wash the surface of the wasabi with fresh running water. Ok, we are going to dry them lightly with a paper towel. Use a petty knife, cut the fibre off. We are going to grate the wasabi with its skin on. Use the back of the petty knife. Remove any small bumpy knobs around the main stem, but not too much. Again, if needed, cut off the fibre. Ok, now the wasabi is ready. So, we are going to grate the wasabi with this utensil called Asame Hada, or Shark Skin Grater. This is designed especially for grating wasabi. To get a more pungent aroma, we do an action more like grinding than just grating it. Hold the wasabi vertically against the shark skin grater and grind it with light pressure in a circular motion. The reason why we do it in a circular motion on the grater is that this way we can break up the cells and get a more pungent taste than doing it in a back and forth motion. Make sure to grate it slowly and lightly. Like this. A few minutes after the grated wasabi is exposed to air, it enhances its flavour and reaches its peak, but at the same time it starts fading away, and it will last only about 20 minutes. So I highly recommend grating the amount you are going to use just before serving. I understand it may be hard to find a shark skin grater. In that case, you can substitute one with a stainless steel grater. When you use a stainless steel grater, make sure to use the side that has smaller teeth and place parchment paper. Again, make sure you grate in a circular motion. Grate it light and slow, not too much pressure. Ok. The wasabi is ready to use. Then, 
how to store the unused wasabi. Take a paper towel and put it in water. Then, wrap the wasabi in a moist paper towel and cover it lightly in a plastic wrap. This will help the wasabi to stay fresh for up to two weeks in your fridge. Next, I am going to demonstrate how to prepare wasabi using ground wasabi powder. This powder is a substitute for when you cannot find fresh wasabi. All we need is a small sized ball, so about 80 cc of water and 50 grams of powdered wasabi and a rubber spatula. This powdered wasabi is made by drying fresh wasabi and grounding it into powder. It looks like this. Now, all we do is add some water to it. Put the wasabi powder into a bowl. Now, we are going to add water to it. It is easy to make and it comes together quickly. Just make sure to mix it well until it becomes smooth. You can see how it's coming together. So now it's ready to use. Same as fresh wasabi, you have to wait for a few minutes before using it because it enhances its flavor after a couple of minutes or so. You can keep it in a container with a lid. If you made too much and couldn't finish using it, then you can also keep it in the freezer. How to fillet a fish Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate how to sokodori salmon. So, on to the fillet. It still has the belly and gill area. So first, I am going to show you how to cut off the fillet. Now, you will need to trim the belly and back, slicing out the white membrane from one end to the other. Just like this, 
This contains bones, so slice it out. Then, turn the fillet around. Slice out the membrane the same way I did. Try not to slice the meat off. I recommend you to simply grill or roast this belly part and season the head with salt. So cut them to your preferred size. Next, you'll need to use tweezers to remove the pin bones. You can feel the direction of the bones this way when you touch it. So what you need to do is to pull the bones in the same direction as the head. Then, touch the part to make sure you got every one. Okay, it's done. Now, I am going to show you how to sakudori, which means cut the fillet to your preferred size. I think it is up to you how big you cut the fillet. But this time, as an example, I am going to cut this in half. Then tail side, cut in half lengthwise. Here, this part contains softer bones, so I will cut it off thinly. You can feel the softer bones in here. We are done with sakudori now. Now, wrap each one with kitchen paper towel and then plastic wrap. When you wrap them, make sure you wrap it tight. Okay, you can keep them in the fridge after doing this. You can keep it in the freezer as well. Later on, you can eat it as sashimi, no problem. This time, I used gyuto to fillet a salmon. You can use any knife which is comfortable in your hand and easy for you to do the work. So, the part that we cut off first 
you can eat it, of course. For example, it tastes very good when you roast or grill seasoned only with salt. Or you can make soup with this as it will make an amazing fish stock. So I recommend not to throw them away. That's it for how to fillet a salmon. How to present sashimi. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do sugata zukuri with this. What I'm about to show you is forming the fish as a plate, forming the fish shape for plating. So, forming the fish like this, bending up the head and tail, we make a bed for the fish with daikon radish. We are going to use an usuba knife for this. Imagine how high you want it to be. Using bamboo sticks, put it in the daikon radish like this. This is how it goes, but it is too long to use, so I'm going to cut it. I recommend that you use a diva knife to cut these hard sticks. So now, I'm going to put the bamboo sticks into the daikon radish bed. To set the fish in place, I'm going to use three sticks here. Put the bamboo sticks into the head here. Now, set the head in the position you want. We will make the pectoral fin look nicer. What to do is tear the upper part of the fin and put it in the grill. You see? It looks much better with the fin straight up. Again, tear the upper part of the pectoral fin, then put it in the grill. Now we are going to set the tail as well. We could use a daikon radish bed for the tail too, but this time we are going to use tsuma to set the tail in position. And to look better, cover the daikon bed with tsuma. the same way on the body, like this. More on the back, less in front. Now we are slicing the fish with a yanagiba knife. First making a slit in the skin so that it can take soy sauce well and make it easy to eat. The tail end is just skin, so we're not going to use it. Okay, now we are almost done plating, but at last 
we are going to put some ashirai on for decoration. Place the ashirai in empty spaces. There, the Snappa Sugata Zukuri is all done. Now, we are going to do the sashimi platter. Today, we are going to plate four kinds of fish. And, well, what we have here today is a deep and wide dish. And the other one is a bamboo colander. And we are going to add some crushed ice at the bottom of the dish. Doing this makes it taste chilly and nicer and also visually cooler in the summer season. And here, this is a Masu Sake cup. I am going to use this as a decoration on the plate. To make it even, put some suma under the Masu cup. Bamboo leaf would make a nice decoration with its green color. Try to visualize what it would look like after plating. These are for the accompaniment of two items on the dish. One for the fish, the other is whelk shell. And then, we are going to need to make some space for three other items. When you do shikizuma, meaning using suma for decoration, make a tsuma ball in your hands, but softly. Now, we are going to do plating sashimi on these accompaniments. Put the oba against the suma to make three-dimensional art. Now, we go on to place the sliced fish. First, tuna. This is well. Arrange them on the plate. Next, we move on to salmon. This salmon has skin on it, so we are going to have to remove it. Let me show you how. You can start from the side where you are comfortable. This time, I will start from the right side. So, place the knife between the flesh and skin. Slice down a little bit, then hold the skin with the other hand. Now, slice down to the skin. When the blade reaches the skin, begin cutting towards the left between the flesh and the skin. At the same time, hold the skin with your left hand. 
Continue cutting until you reach the end of the salmon. When you do it right, this is what it is supposed to look like. Just like this with a silver color. This silver color is from the skin which protects the flesh from oxidation. All fish have a grain within the meat. These white lines here are the grain. Basically, you need to cut against the grain. Now, from which side should you start cutting? When you look at the grain, you can tell the grain goes this way. If you cut against the grain, the meat will fall apart. This way of cutting, we call it sakame. And this is the right way. We are going to cut from this side. We call it june. So now, we are going to cut against the grain. Okay, plate it nicely. Next, we move on to shime saba. The tail is narrower so you adjust the knife angle to make the pieces all the same size as much as possible. Cut it wider or thicker, depending on the shape of the fish. Finally, this is the last fish out of the five kinds. Now, we are going to slice a snapper. To enjoy its texture, shimofuri is done beforehand. But to make it less chewy, what we are going to do is make a cut in the skin. This way, it also allows each slice to take soy sauce when we eat it. Like this. Now, slice. To make a beautiful display on a big plate, you don't want to make spaces among each item. So, put some ashirai or other decoration on the spaces to build them up. Make a nice shaped wasabi. Finally, five kinds of assorted sashimi platter is done. 